Herzlich willkommen, liebe Psychonauten und Freunde der Psychedelik, zu unserer Online-Ersatzveranstaltung für den ausgefallenen Bicycle Day, der heute am 28. August in Basel, Münchenstein hätte stattfinden sollen. Naja, ihr Lieben, Corona-bedingt schieben wir das Ganze schon seit zwei Jahren jetzt vor uns her und haben diesen Bicycle Day für dieses Jahr auch ausfallen lassen. Kein Wunder ist der Bicycle Day doch auch gar nicht im August, sondern am 19. April, wie ihr alle wisst. Wir hätten uns eigentlich in diesem Augenblick im Hotel Hofmatt in Münchenstein bei Basel getroffen und ein eintägiges Symposium veranstaltet, unter anderem auch mit dem hochverehrten Stanislav Groff, der unter anderem angekündigt gewesen ist. Das klappt jetzt nun nicht. Wir haben die Veranstaltung, wie ich es auch schon in unseren anderen Formaten zum Ausdruck gebracht hatte, auf 2023 geschoben und dann werden wir dort im Frühjahr, also im April, eine zweitägige Veranstaltung, ein entsprechendes Symposium zum Sujet 80 Jahre LSD veranstalten. Ja, heute genießen wir ein über anderthalbstündiges Interview, das die liebe Kollegin Friederike Meckel-Fischer aus der Schweiz für uns per Zoom-Call mit Stanislav Groff und seiner Frau Brigitte geführt hat. Wie ihr wisst, ist vor einiger Zeit das große zweibändige Lebenswerk Stans erschienen. Der Weg des Psychonauten Band 1 und Band 2. Ich hatte das in unserer Nachtschatten-Television hier auf YouTube schon des Öfteren mal vorgestellt. Ich bereite auch zur Zeit bis zum kommenden Frühjahr das Ganze als Hörbuch nochmal vor. Ja, die beiden Bücher sind jetzt zu erwerben. Ihr findet die Links zu unserem Shop unten in der Videobeschreibung unter dem Video. Und dann ist gerade auch frisch herausgekommen und darum soll es heute auch vermehrt gehen, zum 90. Geburtstag Stan Groffs, das Geburtstagsbuch, das seine Frau Brigitte mit uns zusammen realisiert hat und das am 1. Juli 2021 zum 90. Wiegenfest Stans auf seinem Geburtstagstisch gelegen hat. Im Interview werden Sie sich auch auf dieses Buch hier und da beziehen. Es gibt insbesondere tiefe private Einblicke in Stans Leben. So lernen wir unter anderem, dass er schon als Kind von seiner Mutter als Einschlafhilfe mit ein bisschen, einem kleinen, kleinen bisschen Eierlikör bedacht wurde, was dazu geführt hat, dass er bis heute ein Freund des Eierlikörs ist. Nur um mal eine der wirklich privaten und intimen Anekdoten da rauszufischen. Der aufmerksame Zuhörer, Zuschauer wird noch viel, viel mehr aus Stans Leben erfahren und auch von seiner Arbeit, seiner Motivation, seinen Hintergründen. Und auch dem, was er erreicht hat in 90 Lebensjahren, während derer er über 60 Jahre jetzt schon psychedelische, psychiatrische, transpersonale Forschungen betreibt. Ich wünsche euch jetzt viel Vergnügen mit diesem Interview. Stan hat, das kurz zur Erklärung, er würde es im Interview auch selbst nochmal erläutern, vor einiger Zeit einen Schlaganfall gehabt, einen leichten Schlaganfall. Das hat sich nicht auf seine intellektuellen Fähigkeiten ausgewirkt, wohl aber auf seine Sprache. Stan hat ja früher vor seinem Schlaganfall sehr, sehr gut Deutsch auch nicht nur verstanden, sondern auch gesprochen. Heutzutage ist es ihm lieber, in der für ihn sicheren Sprache zu kommunizieren. Das ist das Englische. Er hat den Großteil seines Lebens in den USA gelebt. Und von daher wird auch das nachfolgende Interview auf Englisch nun erfolgen. Wir haben das nicht übersetzt, sondern wir lassen es so im Original, sodass ihr also einen Eindruck des originalen, ursprünglichen Gesprächs auch erhaltet. Viel Vergnügen mit jetzt über anderthalb Stunden Interview Stan und Brigitte Groff, gefragt, interviewt durch Friederike Meckel-Fischer. Stanislav Groff, our Stan turned 90 this year on the 1st of July. The world could participate in this touching digital birthday party. What a joy. And we were able to see and to receive his book where he is, receives an homage to his 90th birthday. So that was really a great, great festivity. For us, this festivity will go on a little longer. Stan and Brigitte agreed to an interview. I thank them both very, very much. Originally, this little conversation was to be held on this very bicycle day uh, this year, organized by the PSIFA in Basel. Due to Corona, this event was postponed twice, as I said before, and unfortunately, it will not be held live again before spring 23. So it has been decided 
to understand now and at the same time to remind of LSD entering the world through its father, Albert Hoffman. Bicycle Day anecdotally marks the beginning of a new era of consciousness and consciousness research. We all know that this research is not only closely associated with Stan, but Stan is also the representative par excellence. Therefore, we do not have to introduce him to this experienced audience. You only need to uh, put Stan's name on Professor Google and you find anything, everything, interviews, YouTubes, numerous talks, his many honors. Now one can even do an online course in his teachings. Not to forget his many books and the new film on the way of the psychonaut. You can imagine basically everything has been said before. Thus, we are faced with the task of not bringing too much more of the same. I myself met Stan for the first time in Munich. He gave a talk and a follow-up workshop in holotropic breathwork. My first experience of a holotropic state of consciousness was so impressive that I immediately rolled up for the program. That was in 1989. The certificate in 1991 for me meant a new beginning of a new life and the start of an enduring friendship with Stan. During the training, Brigitte was Stan's assistant. And so we became, we became friends at the same time. This is now 30 years to the year. I'm happy that you, Brigitte, here are here and thank you for your support. And thank you that you have a stand and thank you for everything. Now the context, birthday and bicycle day offers an invitation to ask for personal memories and anecdotes. You can imagine that Stan's long and wide ranging life cannot be captured or even told in an hour. I'm very happy to let us enjoy our virtual get together Good evening, dear Stan. Good evening, dear Brigitte. We have now all the time for this conversation, but it is still only enough for anecdotal flashes from your long life. So will you please introduce yourself? You don't have to, but I think you would like to say a few words and then you tell me when I should ask the first question. And I have decided not to interrupt you. So when you have done with the question, I go on with the next. Is that okay? Well, Frieder, it's wonderful, wonderful to see you. We haven't seen each other for a very long time. And uh, these days, uh, before I do interviews or some other things, I have to say one thing, which is about uh, two and a half years ago, I had a stroke. Um, it didn't uh, create any kind of uh, uh, paraclidia for me. Um, I believe I can still, uh, my um, thinking is okay, but, but uh, it uh, affected my, my uh, speech. Um, so if I will have some uh, difficulties, uh, you, either you or, or uh, Brigitte here can, can help me. Now, I would like to say a few things about, about uh, Brigitte. Should you know each other uh, for at least 35 years ago? Uh, uh, we met in, um, uh, in this, first in, in uh, Switzerland. Uh, no, before, before Freiburg, Freiburg, Freiburg and then and, in uh, uh, Switzerland, yeah. And then for one year, you, you lived in uh, SLN, where we have beginning the holotropic breathwork, mm -hmm. and you basically uh, be there in each of them, in the small ones and in month long workshops, and, and were training uh, holotropic uh, breathwork before we ever had any kind of uh, um, formal uh, training. 
And now, uh, it's about six years ago, we uh, reunite. Mm -hmm. And um, about, uh, five years ago, we, we got married. No? Yeah. <laughs> you so know, remember that I said, when you married, I said, if you get only half as happy as my husband and I, then you oh. are the luckiest guys in the world. And I'm afraid you are. <laughs> So thank well, you. We, we wrote a film, you know, uh, and uh, during at the end of it, I said that I didn't expect that I would have uh, the last uh, years, years of my of, of my life, you know, the most most uh, beautiful time. Yeah. And it's it's really because of uh, Brigitte, of course. So let's have a beautiful time now. <laughs> so we go to the first question. Okay. Yeah, Stan, as I said, we start at the beginning. So to your very early childhood, could you talk a little about your parents and your family? Well, my parents, uh, uh, they lived in a, in a very s uh, small town. Um, it's very difficult to, to translate in Czech. It's Česká Trebová, but people usually uh, translate it in, in uh, German talking, burning, uh, burning Trübau, Burmish Trübau, yeah. Uh, now my um, uh, father of my of my mother, they had a, uh, on the main street they had a, a shop, and. Um, Uh, they were my, sell, mm -hmm. selling all kinds of things there, right? Uh, they had everything. Well, it was uh, all kinds of things, you know, from from uh, came from uh, halals and all kinds of things, all the way to China mm -hmm. and porcelain. So porcelain, yeah, everything. Uh, so my my. Uh, Father, he came from a from a very poor family. Uh, her father was on uh, a, a, a small time, very near to uh, the rail, and uh, his job was to go and and shift a uh, railboat every time that the trains were coming or, or going. You know, a very very difficult uh, uh, job uh, for a very little money, and they had ten. Uh, Children surviving, surviving, yeah, surviving, yeah. Mm -hmm. surviving. <laughs> who, who had very, very hard time even, you know, surviving, and so they were very um, uh, participating in in uh, um, all kinds of things. They were, of course, going to uh, for forest, you know, for mushrooms, for for uh, berries, and so on, uh, for <laughs> wherever they were, fruits, and so on. <laughs> Um, you're actually so they, you're still doing this today. <laughs> get, yeah. get everything. Then, uh, actually, my my father then you know, although he didn't have it anymore, he still was always going to mushrooms and to yeah. berries and and he basically us taking us uh, as, as well. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, you, you and today were... I'm, I'm trying to uh, you know mushroom uh, myself. Well, my mother was. Uh, she was a student on a curvatory, you know, and she was a pianist, a pianist and uh, um, actually playing concerts and and uh, uh, also uh, working with um, with the uh, um, singers from the from uh, the, uh, the opera opera, you know, she was she was the company there. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's uh... so what happened when they got married when they fell in love what happened <laughs> <laughs> when uh, when they fell in, in love and they wanted to get uh, married there was a marriage problem uh, because my um, family of my, of my mother she was very uh, Strictly uh, a Christian family, mm -hmm. Christian. family, uh, mm -hmm. 
Yes. And uh, uh, the family of my of my father had no uh, no religion, mm -hmm. and so the the church uh, in that little town, you know, consider my my uh, father to be a pagan. Yes. And they didn't want to marry him. Mm -hmm. And so there was a major problem for a while. It seemed that it wouldn't happen at all. And then um, my uh, father, my mother's uh, uh, ma a major uh, contribution uh, uh, to the church. Oh. <laughs> and uh, so that helped. <laughs> and, and, and so they changed somehow. Uh, the situation and uh, rules and uh, and make it uh, and merit uh, a pagan. 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 <laughs> yeah. So now, uh, what happened at the time? You know, we I, I mentioned that that uh, uh, they lived on the, on the uh, main street and it was just across the uh, church, and so uh, when. Uh, they were uh, they were uh, married uh, at the at the uh, altar. Then they had to go across the street. They stopped the they stopped the traffic there. And the big thing was going that thing. And they went directly into the into the house uh, for the buffet. Didn't they have the red carpet there? Was red it carpet carpet the was across the yeah. I think it was in, and, in Paul's uh, photo show from Ubiquity. Uh, yeah. and, and my parents were so you know upset about the situation that they didn't want to have anything to do with church anymore. Mm -hmm. And neither me nor my brother, uh, Paul, that got uh, um, baptized, you know. And uh, they said that we should make a choice in terms of the, what kind of religion at the time when we come of age and we just make it ourselves. So for, for, for me come then uh, uh, the problem when, uh, when I had my first LSD session. <laughs> so you found your spirituality, my spirituality through psychedelics. Yeah, through psychedelics. That's how you yeah. found your yeah. own uh, spirituality. Okay. So uh, I asked about the basic characteristics of your father and your mother. What gave them uh, what they g gave to you in your life. So let's go to your father first. Uh, I said, all psychiatrists have a crazy father and maybe yours not? Um, no, my father was certainly was not crazy. He was a very solid uh, person. Um, he was the only out of those 10 people in, in uh, her family, the one who managed to uh, get some uh, higher uh, education. Mm -hmm. And he was uh, making uh, the man making money during the time of he, when he was uh, uh, he was having education. Uh, he was actually helping other other students, you know, who were not very uh, smart. <laughs> good. Uh, and not not only did she you know pay for that, but she was sending it to to uh, he, he, the family. He. The, yeah. Yeah, he, was, he was he yeah. was. Um, more money for the for the mm -hmm. for the family and uh, he became a chemist but then moved in the direction of uh, commerce uh, became a business so uh, he was in a company where they were sending uh, um, outside and inside uh, different uh, different uh, uh, substances mm -hmm. you know. And I think he even he didn't go to communist party. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, this you know he actually made it all the way uh, to the uh, vice uh, vice president of this big company uh, until the communists came and uh, uh, they really wanted to, people within these kind of positions to be in a, in a communist party, mm -hmm. and so he asked him to become a part of. Uh, of Communist Party, which which he didn't want to do, mm -hmm. and so they really kicked him out, mm -hmm. and gave him a, a worker from uh, from uh, actually somewhere, and uh, they have him to train him for two years. Yes, and and to get his job. Him out. Yeah. yeah. My it's goodness. Yes. But uh, this was attitude. Hmm? My goodness. Yeah, and uh, your mother. How about your mother? 
when uh, you know my mother was uh, for some time she was uh, she was uh, playing in uh, concerts and also uh, i mentioned the these uh, singers of of uh, of company you know the, the a company the company a company uh, that's uh, um, singers you know in in your uh, Opera. In uh, Orea, Opera. In Opera. <laughs> and uh, they actually, when uh, <laughs> they came to the place, whether she continues to to uh, do his uh, career, or if uh, she makes a family, and, and, and he somehow uh, chose, you know, eyes for this, uh, and then actually she was. Then, then we were, we were sort of born, and, and he was he was trying to both of us to be in concerts <laughs> expert, and, <laughs> and um, you know they were so so uh, pressure uh, on that mm. that uh, I did it for a while and, and gave it up, and she was a, she was a uh, um, classical you know, classic class, classic classic yeah, yes. and. Uh, my brother became uh, from saxophone, in, saxophone, in a, a saxophone, jazz, jazz player. A jazz player, yeah. <laughs> oh dear God, <laughs> poor woman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, you discovered through her spirit. No, that she's not finished. That uh, we oh, wanted to say again. Yeah. Uh, that she took you to this guy when when you were thirteen. What? She followed Paul Brunton. She brought you yeah. To... No, this is I think this is very important from from uh, my mother or both both mother. Then she um, became a, a f uh, follower of uh, Paul Brunton, who is a uh, writer, you know, philosopher, uh, who was. Um, uh, Popularizing uh, uh, Hinduism, and she took me several times for these meetings, uh, where I first, uh, you know, discovered um, Hinduism and and also also uh, Buddhism, mm -hmm. and so you know I knew uh, um, Mahar Maharshi, you know. Um, uh, Aurobindo and so mm -hmm. on, uh, Tagore and so Tagore, on. Yeah. Um, so he, she was going around the world, and once in a while came to one of the uh, countries, and you know we were we were having a meeting uh, where he gave a, a talk, uh, and uh, then we had to uh, meditate, and I was so excited, you know, about this about the philosophy there uh, about uh, uh, spirituality and so on but once they put me on the on the <laughs> you know I just I was I felt so uh, bored you know I said what do we could possibly want to do this kind of thing there's so many interesting things in the world and great so I that happened happened in Meditation for me until until I started having uh, sessions in in uh, um, psychedelic sessions. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it became very easy easy for me to mm -hmm. to meditate once I had some a few of these powerful experiences. Sure. And you even studied Sanskrit, yeah? I'm yeah, this, I became really deeply interested in Hinduism, yeah. and uh, so decided to uh, study Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. And of course, Paul decided that he wanted to do it too. So, in the uh, uh, Oriental Institute in Prague, you know, there was once uh, one uh, uh, school which which had uh, Sanskrit, and they had three people, three students, three students and <laughs> two of them were from our family. One, one myself, and the one was uh, Paul. And you know we couldn't we couldn't have any any of the material there for because this was all in English and so on, mm -hmm. and we just couldn't get it. And but I could go to to uh, uh, library, you know, and uh, and copy it. So I still have uh, the yes. whole the whole uh, uh, 
grammar, you know, of Sanskrit mm -hmm. written and written in my in my hand, you know. In your book. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> and it survived in, in our our um, house burned in in uh, San Francisco. And uh, this sur uh, survey by so I have it. I have this whole thing. It's still there. Yeah. Mm. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. So shall I go to the next question? Yes. So sure. uh, who were you as a child in your early childhood? Well, what, what happened, you know, that uh, when uh, uh, after, after my uh, marriage, uh, my parents went to uh, to Prague and after for your hmm? after your parents wedding. got married. What did I say? Yes, after, that's for, no, for the wedding. For the wedding, was uh, not North. they uh, they went to to Prague, mm. and so for the first uh, three years, you know, I was basically been just with my uh, mother alone. So it was a yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of an ideal situation for me. But then, uh, when I was about three and a half years. Then uh, very suddenly, surprisingly, both of my parents of my of my mother died, and so she had to move from Prague to uh, Bernisch Prübam again, and uh, she had to uh, confiscate the the business there. Liquidate. 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 And at the same time, uh, there was a mobilization happening. You know, Hitler was already obviously ready to uh, to come to take taking over Czechoslovakia so there was a, a complete of, of the mobilization and and satisfying the, mm. uh, Con so, so the liquidating uh, the business dissolving you know, my mother my, my, uh, you know a lot of work with it mm. and um, I was basically helping you know but a lot of a lot of uh, women mostly <laughs> having uh, um, to um, about uh, tier eight, the, uh, yeah, the teenager, teenager uh, uh, cousins. Uh, there was there was a nanny. Uh -huh. there, there was a, a, a cook. Cook, yeah. All women. <laughs> and and some of the some of the young uh, uh, ladies in the in the business once in a while help people. Okay. <laughs> and I was not an easy ch child. I was very. You were very active. Uh, yeah, I was acting out. <laughs> Curious. I bet. Wild. He was wild. Yeah. I, <laughs> so I go to the next question. Yeah. You had cousins a little older than you around who fascinated you. Tell us about this time in your life. You were talking about two, two, uh, two older cousins. Were, hmm? Two older cousins you had. Did there you? were some other. These were these were a teenager that I was talking about. Yeah, but yeah. we had as we, obviously we had quite a few cousins because okay, of the yeah. family. And so those were uh, but two and three years um, older than than uh, I was. And so I started watching them when they when they started learning and you know reading and and uh, uh, Writing, writing, and uh, I was very um, uh, ambitious, you know, uh, for the uh, fighting with them. You were competing, and actually get get ahead, you know. You were and getting so, ahead. So, <laughs> wow. you know, in some senses. So when I was five uh, five years, I already was able to read uh, books. To read books already yeah. with five, and. Uh, and I loved uh, animals very much. Mm -hmm. So my parents, when I was uh, my sixties, uh, six, uh, six uh, uh, birthday, they gave me uh, the prem, uh, prem, brem, uh, life of Tierleben. Life. Tierleben. You know it in, in German, but, Leben, yeah. but, but it was Czech was called uh, yeah. a life of uh, animals. animals so brem, B R E H. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I was just fascinated by it so a lot when I when I had time, you know, I was I was in it, I was writing it. You were painting and, uh, them, no? Reading. I was I was also very interested in painting at the time. And so I was uh, I was uh, writing those those animals in 
in uh, uh, the book and uh, you were painting them. Then, then people, yeah, when I was going to to uh, school mm -hmm. and we do biology, they usually brought my uh, <laughs> teachers, you know, yeah, the uh, to to on the on the uh, uh, book blackboard on, on blackboard, blackboard, you know, to to draw these uh, animals <laughs> as as they were talking about them. So. Unbelievable. <laughs> And so, uh, so um, your your uncle Tabek, he was also catching and hunting animals. Your uncle Tabek. Yeah, well, all kinds of things. You know, this uh, uh, one of my one of my uncles uh, was a really hunter, and and also was able to catch birds and so on uh, in all kinds of traps, and, mm -hmm. and this. Uh, came you know, was also from the family because they, they everything that was eaten they would they would eat mm -hmm. and so i became very excited to watch him you know what to find what those birds they are and how, how they're catching mm -hmm. um, so i was loved in animal but at that time i uh, was thinking that i would like to become a hunter lion hunter in africa <laughs> I, I love them now in a very different uh, way <laughs> As you probably saw from our from our video, yeah. yeah. Our job. Well, I have a funny story here to to tell yes, because please. Uh, Stan, um, you you I love that story. It's so sweet because before he did psychedelics, as we know, he was wild, and so he said when there was a rabbit on the street in the car, he would put push on the gas to hit it. You know, he could take it home and eat it, and I said. Now, after all the spiritual experiences, today I step on the break for butterflies. Oh, okay. so that's the real change. Yes, so how you can change uh, in psychedelics. Yes, they do, exactly. We are at the point. They do exactly this. The so, other thing was uh, I was also very interested in, in uh, butterfly. And at that point, I found a professor who was walking around, I was kicking in, in my... Catching, head. catching yeah. them? Yeah, this was what I was doing, but he was he was collecting uh, mm. uh, uh, caterpillar. Oh. And so at home, he had a whole uh, saturated catcher, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, uh, of course, I was following it all the time. Mm -hmm. So he was finding where, where the caterpillars were in what kind of... Uh, um, uh, Plant and but, from, from but plant, yeah. were they alive? Did they yeah, turn was, to butterflies? Huh? Did they yeah, turn? we had them at home, and yeah. they would they would uh, became uh, of them wow. butterflies. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for this story. Great, <laughs> I love it. So, when you were seven years old, your parents had an extremely busy time, and they decided to send you away. Please tell us about this time of this first experience of leaving the unknown environment and your lesson out of this. Well, you know, in addition to the problems that my mother had, which was already mentioned about the uh, confiscating the, the business and, and the, the war, war coming and so on, uh, Paul became uh, born, you know, four and a half years uh, younger mm -hmm. and this was a little too much for my family because that was not an easy child <laughs> as I mentioned yes. and they they have a, a, the ants one of the ants who didn't have any children and so they sent me to uh, to um, the one year to uh, Brun. the city which is called um, um, Brno, but it's Brun is usually translated <coughs> in uh, German, Brun. Yeah, Brun. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was that was difficult for me because suddenly I was taken out of my uh, environment, you know, and I lost all my all my uh, friends, of course, and everything I was doing. And. Um, uh, so I've, uh, interesting was for me that I've, I decided somehow that the only thing that, uh, that I can uh, rely, on, rely on 
is what you know, you know, because then I came then into an, an environment, but I, I was doing well in school, you know, and, and uh, I again, uh, but in, in, imagine if, if uh, uh, fantasy for, for friends and, you know, I was always like creating some kind of uh, interesting uh, place and so on. So it was, it was fraught, you know, what I basically was ca carrying with me, somehow I was able to create a new, new environment there. Mm -hmm. And this was very important for me, of course, leaving, leaving uh, Europe, leaving uh, mm -hmm. Prague and, and going to, to America. It was somehow similar, yeah? You when I, just when, when I was, of... yeah, when I was uh, flying, you know, to, to uh, America, I had, we had, uh, could have four um, kil kilos in, 40. you know, uh, 40, no, four. Four, 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 zero, yeah. 40, 40. 40, yeah. Okay, with numbers are a little <laughs> What did I say? You said four, you missed the no. zero, 40. 40, and I get uh, 15 of it were my own belongings mm -hmm. and 25 were all my, uh, on my uh, uh, the papers, yeah, your papers, what, your research. Papers, papers of research, mm -hmm. because I knew that I could, could sort of again um, start different. You know, with I had, I had something that that I could build on. Yeah. Thank you. That was a big lesson. Yeah. So I go on. When you were nine years old, World War Two began. This, I suppose, born after the war, I, I think this must be a very difficult time in your family and for your friends. So please tell us about how your parents managed to live and to survive. Well, before and for some time, you know, when uh, when mother was uh, confiscating, confiscating the, uh, the business, uh, we were in, Two different places because my my father was uh, a this very good job in in uh, Prague, mm -hmm. and and my mother had to be in in Venus Rebound, British Rebound, British Rebound, and uh, so he was uh, basically going just for the for the uh, Saturday and Sunday, mm -hmm. so we otherwise uh, we were separated. And then was a situation where it was possible when the, this uh, business was gone and then we could create a family. And so my, my uh, father uh, bought an uh, apartment mm -hmm. and uh, you know, my, my mother, Paul, and I could uh, go to Prague and, and having, uh, having for the first time again the family together. So this and of course, it didn't take very long because uh, uh, it was this. Uh, In March 39, yeah. the, the Nazis uh, came. Yeah. You know, this was in, in invading, you know, invaded. Yeah. The tanks came into, into uh, uh, Nazis. And uh, this was something that was uh, happening for the next. Uh, six mm -hmm. years. My goodness, yes. So how they did they manage? <laughs> well, it was, it was difficult, but uh, again, my, my parents were really amazing. You know, for example, it was very difficult to get food, of course, with rationing and so on, coupons. Uh, and so every, every summer, you know, they had uh, friends in in a, in a um, farm, mm -hmm. and so we, we moved there, and we were working. We were helping with the harvest, and so for those uh, two months, you know, we could food just from. There's always food in a farm, you know, mm -hmm. and we actually from them got some get some things to to stay, mm -hmm. to bring to. And also my mother was very, very good to cook, you know. Uh, my, my 
father again continue like what what they were doing is you know always uh, uh, mushrooms and and <laughs> berries and so on and he's a chemist so he was also making uh, uh, wine schnapps, and, no? <laughs> and schnapps. wine but he also was able to to distill distilling which was not allowed you know so it was very very problem in our house uh, um, um, because when he was when he was uh, making the this is dissertation, it was you could you could knew it in the house. Smell it. You so smell it. was sm smelling and so on. And of also we were there. Of course, we wanted to um, uh, listen the uh, other radio. Uh, yeah, this the West. This uh, um, voicing uh, voice of voice America and BB BBC. And BB BBC and uh, this was this was not allowed and so what they did they destroyed the, actually the short uh, light short short lace waves 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 Lace, so you cannot do it mm -hmm. and of course that all the experts who were many to put it back so we were able to <laughs> and again we were worried you know if, if anybody hears yes and wasn't that the story the edits are there it was there on the on the second floor and this you know and and SDRP was and it's not, yeah. was in the house. Yeah, they had very, they were put in there. So they had no, 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 <laughs> the NSDAP is fine. NSDAP. people <laughs> understand. So so what and then wasn't that the problem little problem with Paul? Because he was And we had problem because you know Paul was very smart and he was listening to everything. Young. Not only uh, the, you know the radio, but also the kind of uh, what we what we did about it, what you know, talked you know, about it at all. And so I remember one day I came to uh, <laughs> Barber, no? Barber, yeah, and mm -hmm. we left him and somehow alone. And he, <laughs> I came in and he got and was sitting on a chair and was telling people, giving a talk. He stood in and tell him what is politically how really bad. <laughs> bad person uh, Hitler, is. Hitler was. <laughs> <laughs> how old was he when he did that? Well, he was four and a half years. So. Uh, So he was like maybe four or four or five. Or four or five, yeah. Okay. Oh, he gave horrible. a talk. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so you. So you, you dragged know, him home quickly. Unfortunately, <laughs> there, there were not very many people who would who would sort of be uh, support. You know this. Uh, oh. So uh, <laughs> when somebody talked Czech, you know, we, mm. usually it was okay. But oh, okay. of course, you never know. You know. Okay. And that he was, he was, people were, you know, <laughs> she had a lot of, a lot of audience there <laughs> was, was listening. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, you know, what I have great, because these days, once in a while, we had the air tire. Aya cognac, Aya liqueur, Aya liqueur. It's called Aya because my, my father made this cognac, you know. Yeah. And my, my mother would, would be uh, this. Uh, Put the eggs in there. Yeah. And so every time we were going into the cellar for the rain, uh, for, for the, the rape, bombs, for, for the, the rape, bombs, the for bomb rape, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my, uh, my mother brought uh, this um, air cognac, and uh, although we were not supposed to have it as children. <laughs> But, she she know, filled the kids with so that, Ayak on yet. So that we were very quiet, that we would, we, and we, we slept, you know, we were not worried. So you still like so, it. <laughs> so, and you know, till now, till now, we sort of say, I love, I love Ayak on you know. It's good to know. <laughs> it's a good sleeping aid, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. yeah. May I go on? Yeah, sure. Sure. <laughs> it seems to me you already were a master of getting out the, the best out of everything. Your family survived the Nazi occupation. What did you get out of this from these difficult years? Well, one thing, of course, you know, there was uh, there was a uh, lot of opportunity to to uh, learn and. Uh, German, you know, yeah, and um, and there was the uh, Germanizations, you know, in in Europe at the time, yeah. 
and so it, for example, had to go every day on Saturday. You know, we had to give uh, opera and so on, and and uh, of course, there's a lot of uh, reading and and also history, German history, and so on. So you had to listen and, to an opera every Saturday. Yeah, huh? yeah. <laughs> and so and. Uh, you know, my my friends, they just didn't want to do it. They were sort of, when something was happening, they wanted to close their ears. And I actually became quite quite fascinated by really good good music, good German music and good good uh, uh, books. Um, the extreme was when, when we had, there's a, a German opera in, in Prague and we had a whole uh, Nibelungen uh, ring, mm -hmm. you know, Oh my goodness! Uh, well, of course, that was the ultimate thing that people did not want to listen, you know, because <laughs> it was probably pro pro the propaganda of uh, yeah. Nazis in the first place. And I was just there. I just was absolutely fascinated by it. Uh, they brought they brought uh, horses, uh, live, uh, live horses, when for Valkyria, you know. Uh, and it's when I saw the the Valhalla sort of uh, burning there and so on. I was fascinated and, and stayed uh, following following uh, Wagner, you know, mm -hmm. until until today. But for you, it's um, not about Nazis. It's about the archetypal um, expression yeah. of, the, of the music that he has. No, there, was, right? you know, when he was when he was creating uh, operas, he, he went and he bring amazing archetypal images. Yes, yes. that's why it's that's very, why you like it. That's the reason. And uh, you know, uh, so I cannot uh, say, you know, that I should not should not put something that I was very very fascinated with. Yes. You know, yeah, it's, it's nothing to do with Hitler. You know, yeah. Just... And you learned your German there. Yeah. Great. Well, we had a we had a little a little funny anecdote on the side is that Stan's German used to be very good, but a little antique. So, so we had in our training, he was sometimes using words that were a little outdated, you know, he, said, he, he was using the word gau, and I said, we're not using this anymore, you know, it's, it's called county or something like this, you know, he, because he learned it from the Nazis, so this is very funny, and Goethe, yeah, you had Goethe as well. They was always, you know, when we were doing uh, German speaking uh, training, <laughs> And um, I was, of course, I was translating. And uh, people were just wrecking down. You know, well, he would say, you would say, der Gemahl und die Gemahlin, der Knabe. Yeah. And, uh, so it was Gemahlin. like Gemahl und Gemahlin. Yeah, and Gau, Gau. And yeah, Gau was yeah. totally out. I, said, this, we don't, I was translating, you know, I said, this, we don't use that word anymore. That's a wonderful story. I, I, but it was already was already so funny with the language before when you were guide, you learned the Shakespeare English and you were giving these tours to the people, yeah. right? So yeah. That's also very funny. I mean, but anyway, it's a yeah. funny story. <laughs> yeah, you. So I go with the next question. Okay. Sure. It is known that you had the idea of becoming a cartoonist. How did this arise and how did it end? Well, as I mentioned, I, I loved painting and, and drawing already quite quite a uh, little kid. Mm -hmm. uh, but then at the time uh, when we went to Prague, uh, there was a short period of time when um, America was not yet in war. And so we were getting, getting a lot of uh, uh, American American films, mm -hmm. uh, including Walt Disney, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and that I was just love that. And we had uh, on the uh, block of where, near near our house, when there was a, a cinema, mm -hmm. and they were showing these uh, cartoons. Uh, you know, not not just uh, Disney, but. Uh, mm -hmm but also the uh, Felix uh, or, or uh, Felix cat or, or mm -hmm. uh, the um, Duck. Uh, Popeye. Uh, Popeye, Popeye, Sailor, ah. Sailor, Sailor, Mickey Sailor Mouse, Man, you know, Mickey Mouse. Yeah. and this was a non-set, you know, it's a, a non-stop, so they non -stop. started, you started in uh, uh, two o'clock 
and taking all the way to eight in the evening. And I was there frequently all the time. This was the same thing uh, for, for an hour. So, so I would say that, you know, six of, of whatever of this, of the until, I, until I knew them all, you know, drawing and uh, painting mm -hmm. and so on. That's right. And then after a while, uh, you know, it's, uh, was a little little uh, older, and they are became very excited about uh, another mate painter uh, was a Trnka, Trnka who was a Czech yeah. guy. It was very beautiful, very uh, artistic pictures. But he was doing, uh, um, uh, for example, Pushkin, Pushkin's. Uh, 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 um, uh, Slavic myths, is, hmm? fairy tales, Pushkin's fairy Pushkin. tales, the Slavic myths, and Midsummer Slavic, Night. Slavic myths and uh, um, Midsummer my, Night. Mid, 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 Midsummer Night. Mid, mid, night yeah, dream. And <laughs> very, very beautiful. Mm. So this was a little more uh, uh, high level than than the sort of what they call the Philly uh, Philly Symphony, you know. But but then so he was I mean I was actually wanted to become uh, become uh, making animated create movie. animated movies you know and actually went to, to met uh, met uh, Trnka and I was supposed to start mm -hmm. and just at the time a friend of him I came. And he was holding a book and look a little weird. And uh, I said, what are you doing? He says, I've been reading this incredible book. I say, what is it? What was uh, Freud's, uh, uh, the, uh, the, it was, uh, it was Freud. It was Freud. And everybody. you read it all and, and, night, right? You was, couldn't yeah, stop Yeah, I get very excited, uh, excited and, uh, uh, I couldn't sleep that night, and with about a, a, a couple of weeks, I decided to, to, you know, go to to medicine, and I wanted to become a, a psychoanalyst. So he got he became psychiatrist not because his father was crazy, but because <laughs> he read Freud overnight. And so, <laughs> thanks to Freud, I don't like yeah. it so much, but thanks, uh, thank you. <laughs> well, he's, he 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 started there; he didn't stop there. So. Psycho psychoanalyst, yeah, you yeah. became psychiatrist yeah. and psychoanalyst. Yeah, that yeah. was just the way to get there. Yeah, yeah exactly. And so that was a whole, you know, whole other uh, area that happened to yes. me. You know. But you still love drawing, and all you can see in my book that I made for his birthday, all the paintings in there are from Stan himself. Thank you. <laughs> I haven't looked it through yet because it's, it only came two days ago. Oh. It's on my desk here. So next question. We are, I think we are doing great. You were 14 years old when the war ended. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what Four, can, yeah. 14 years. Mm -hmm. What can you remember of these days? Well, it was very dramatic because um, the last four days, I think, of the war, uh, there was a revolution in, in Prague. There was the, uh, Vermont was already moving, uh, escape, escaping from, uh, from Russian. Mm. And they, they um, um, drove into, into Prague and started killing, uh, killing people. And uh, so uh, we had to we had to create very day very day very day so it was, it was like like in the French Revolution you know uh, people bringing uh, furniture bringing mm -hmm. the uh, uh, stones uh, couple mm -hmm. couple stones mm -hmm. and and garbage mm -hmm. uh, cans and so on and we were on the on the uh, roof mm -hmm. and. Uh, we were making um, this uh, um, Molotov con con cocktails, you know, with, with, uh, with oil and, and mm. uh, benzene and and benzene. Mm -hmm. And I was supposed to also go there. Other places that they 
they needed to be uh, see what was happening and see whether they were sending me to give them uh, give them news because they, they didn't could communicate you know mm. so they were sending him where to go and tell what was happening so, wow. so that was quite uh, quite uh, dramatic um, mm. and then uh, what happened it was that that Prague uh, liberate uh, uh, Vlasov, who was a um, Danish uh, the, the division division from uh, from um, Ukrainian from Ukrainian, you know, who, who believed that uh, Hitler was better than uh, than uh, Stalin, and they, the whole division was was working, and they they became part of the Wehrmacht. And so they actually came and they decided that was a problem, you know, uh, um, that was uh, the war lost, was lost. lost. And yeah. so they turned it around and Changed. started fighting um, the, uh, the Germans. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a result, you know, they, they really could liberate a lot of a lot of people mm -hmm. in, in uh, Prague. And, but then Stalin sent uh, another division from, from the uh, Red uh, Army. Army. And they they got all the all the lots of uh, and they killed, killed them. all the yeah. Ukrainians. Yeah. My goodness, Jesus. And then, you know, then of course people were Czechs were coming, <laughs> and whoever was Germans there, there, there was also sort of recambiation. So it was a, not a very nice kind of yeah. situation. So slaughterhouse. You know, five, yeah. five very very heavy five five days of. Uh, of uh, massacre, you know. Yeah. Oh, for... So, the communist era in your country began after that. May you tell us yes. some of your experiences during this time and why your feelings for the communists are not those of love and loyalty? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, we had about, what was it, four? Three years. Four, three, three years of peace. No? But three, three, yeah. Mm. Uh, some peace, you know. Uh, we started getting some food and so on from uh, from uh, Americans, from the from the uh, uh, soldiers and stuff mm -hmm. like army, mm -hmm. UNRWA, mm -hmm. and uh, we were became. Uh, I was became a water water scout. Mm -hmm. You know, so it became a more more normal uh, time. But then, of course, there was a putsch where mm -hmm. where uh, communists, you know, take over. And uh, what happened at the time? Uh, I was in uh, at school, and uh, there was a. Um, I was in what was called op, uh, uh, Septima. Sep Septima, and there was uh, one. Uh, student who was a year older and he came a lot of a uh, lot of uh, uh, let's uh, chain letters hmm? a chain letter chain letter mm -hmm. paper okay uh, but uh, pamphlet <laughs> but yeah pamphlet. <laughs> um, like, like. Mm -hmm. yeah, i don't get the word when i need it a chain know. flyer asking uh, czech citizens let to write. Let that, you know. anyway Mm -hmm. uh, the idea was uh, that people were right uh, to uh, the American uh, embassy uh, to bring to to uh, the national the, uh, United, the Nations. United Nations United Nations and asking uh, to create a free uh, free uh, Czechoslovakia uh, like, uh, free election. Uh, you know, create because there was we was we were just about to have elections, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and they they knew they the, the communists knew at the point that they would lose it, and, uh, yeah. and so they didn't allow it, and they make a push, mm -hmm. an arm push, push. actually, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, so what what uh, the people wanted to to write this to mm -hmm. um, to the. To, the, so um, to create a near, to make a near uh, election. In, to in the Czech American Republic. embassy yeah. to, to make a free election yeah. for Czechoslovakia. And yeah, they had to, to make United co Nations, co United Nations, yeah. copies to give to your friends. Like and so I was, I was one of the people who got it. And I came back home, it's, it's one o'clock. And uh, 
uh, didn't talk very long, and there was a, a ring was ringing, and then two people came in leather goats and uh, I picked it up and take me to uh, mm -hmm. uh, the place which is called the, uh, the four. Uh, uh, there was a uh, for the investigations, you know, there was mm -hmm. a place uh, which was the number four, so they call it Force. Bar Bartolomezka Street, the, force, uh, the secret police. And, yeah. and then I found out uh, for for uh, my mother afterwards that they just went and uh, regnet, regnet the whole, destroyed the whole, destroyed the whole, the whole apartment. Uh, apartment, you know, and uh, awful. So I, I was there for, for uh, four weeks. Arrested in a in a really <laughs> miserable situation there when we all kinds of uh, you know the thieves thieves and uh, thieves and, uh, robbers robbers and so on murderers uh, swindlers <laughs> uh, and uh, this was the investigation they were trying me to to admit that that uh, I read it and uh, and actually at a certain point. Uh, before what happened in uh, I was supposed to go to uh, to America for, to finish the finish my uh, what would be a gymnasium but it's a it's the highway right uh, high school you know in, in in America I was supposed to finish it yes and so I wasn't going at that time to uh, to the embassy uh, asking because I was asking what is happening and and I was supposed to stay um, uh, speak uh, German to to make a sorry to uh, the English mm -hmm. to speak English you know yes and uh, so there I was the one who had connection I had a connection mm -hmm. with the uh, with the uh, embassy Amps. embassy Amps. and um, they wanted me to to say that actually I was the one who brought it oh. uh, you know which was very difficult and so for yeah. those. For those two weeks, you know, I had going through day and night, sort of whenever they wanted to come and, and you know take me, well, take me to, yeah, for not very nice treatment. Uh, and uh, I was supposed to keep keep you know to say that I really I, I didn't even I didn't even read it. Mm. I, I, so I was very much in, I was very much in a good student, and, and you know this is mm. I put it into my pocket and. Uh, I didn't pay attention what it what was there, and so I, I sort of went through those uh, two weeks, mm -hmm. and then they put me to uh, 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 trial prison prison. prison. Mm -hmm. uh, oh my goodness! Was, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which was for me was very good that uh, I was only uh, seventeen years. Yeah. yeah. People, when you were when you were already adult, then you are really abused, abused much more than than uh, the young people. And also, and you said that these interrogations a, were actually kind of interesting. It changed your consciousness, didn't it? The light and the sleep deprivation. Oh, tell well, that was interesting. When I was, you know, they would come for uh, during this in, interrogations and so on. They would come any time, you know. Uh, and so I would go there, and uh, there are two people there, uh, and there's just uh, powerful lights into your eyes. And I was supposed to tell them my biography. And then they sent me back, and I didn't know if they come back again in like, uh, you know, 20 minutes or, or when they let me sleep and so on. And they, I would to repeat it again, mm -hmm. all the same things that they were waiting, but I make some kind of a. Um, you know, when there's going to be some... Yeah, if you make some difference, you say dissent, dissent, yeah, they can be focused on it. Mm -hmm. And so at that time, there was such... Uh, uh, adrenaline was running, of course, and, and we didn't sleep very much. And so at that point, I started going to non-ordinary states of consciousness. And uh, I started being... Uh, it is not just what they were saying, mm -hmm. but I, I, I said, wow, this is a really interesting uh, sort of experiences, you know. And I started having these things from from childhood yes. reliving, mm -hmm. the, and so it was really the first kind of uh, experience of uh, psychedelic yeah. non ordinary states. <laughs> Interesting, <laughs> unbelievable, really unbelievable. 
So I move on. So you say that, that, you know, there was finally there was a trial. Yes. I, I was acquitted uh, because of a lack, a lack, uh, um, a lack of um, uh, proof. Evidence. Yeah. Evidence, you know, which was sort of, you know, not great in, in, in non communists, you know. Yeah, that was not great for communists. And then I think in the in the if you saw the film, then uh, I also uh, from uh, from this uh, prison I went then for uh, for a month working on a on a dam. Yeah. Hard, you know, hard work and so on, and and then there's some some other interesting uh, sort of synchronicities. They finally you know, managed to. Uh, uh, get it, get it to medical medical school. You know, you received a gold medal. I got well <laughs> because they they took me to not didn't want to put me to my old school because I knew them and so on. So they put me into one uh, when they knew the communists about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was this were not very right. They were not, they were not very they were not bright. Very smart. So Stan got a gold and, medal in this uh, communist uh, school because he was so bright. But, but the, what, what happened the, that the, uh, the director, you know, who was supposed to take care of me, um, uh, had a heart attack when I was when I was bringing to that school. When you came, and to so the he school. somehow missed it. He didn't know so, that he was in prison. So at the end, I get the uh, the. A medal, gold, gold medal, gold, gold medal to the communist From the president. Com so that helped also. That you were but but they also, to the medical they, school. When, when they found out that I gave it, you know, they, they just this was not very nice. Uh, well, they brother. found out what what really was happening was too late. You know, he had it and he couldn't take it back. <laughs> we think a lot of interesting synchronicities. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Very interesting. My goodness. So you actually studied medicine and you just told us what happened, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the, my next question is, how did LSD research come to Prague? And what was the mission? Well, I mentioned to you that I wanted to, you know, be, uh, I had to, I had to be, uh, so. uh, get medicine you know to become to become a psychoanalyst and so uh, i was uh, very really interested in in uh, psychoanalysis and so the in the four years we have we have six years in in prague in uh, in uh, medicine and in the four uh, years uh, i was started going already to the uh, uh, psychiatric clinic because I wanted to get, you know, get some sense of the connection with uh, with the uh, death, with the uh, medicine, with the uh, LSD, this, psychedelics. Hmm? Yeah. And so this is this is where we got uh, a, a big ampule from from uh, LSD from uh, Sanders. And uh, they were asking, you know, that they had this uh, uh, very interesting substance uh, that was created, you know, but by almost an accident by Ahmed Hoffman. And then when they uh, did some uh, experiments with it, that they had the feeling that maybe this could be something used for, for uh, um, psychiatry, for psychology and so on. And, um, I was, of course, very, very interested in it. Uh, and my preceptor uh, was also very interested, but he didn't have time to, to sit, sit there with uh, uh, people, you know, for six hours or something for, for LSD. And so they used uh, uh, students, he were using it just to sit with, uh, with people with, uh, with uh, LSD. And unfortunately, I couldn't get the session myself as I very much wanted to have um, because they didn't uh, allow students until until they graduate. Very much unlike it was in in, 
in America, in, in uh, what happened to to uh, Le Leary and uh, Harvard yeah. and Harvard Harvard they yeah. they allowed to use the uh, uh, students and you know they had a lot of problems they got uh, kicked kicked out from them so they they did want to do something similar in in uh, Prague and I had to wait until until I get my um, you know, become become a yeah. psychiatrist. Yeah. Well, actually, I want to mention in my book for Stan's birthday, I have a wonderful photo of Stan for, with his first LSD session. It's, a, oh. it's really it's very special, and you see he's all with wires. They have wired him up. That's, and that's what that was not the first one. Not the first one, but the first one was the Paul one. Paul, my my brother, who was, okay. was also medicine. Oh, okay. So we were just sitting. That was just for the experience. Yeah. But the, the uh, but wire. I had what I had was this was this um, stroposcope. Stroposcope yes. is light. Yes. But yeah. then later I started I started with this. Uh, uh, the friend, this Wojciechowski, yeah. you know, we were doing, working all the, mm -hmm. uh, and then we were become the you know, yes. guinea pigs, you know, yeah, yeah. guinea pigs. So, so you see this, this wire, wire started, wires actually, everywhere. start became uh, wired, wired, yeah. So this was where you just started to describe your very first LSD session? Well, um, you did the first one, uh, as I mentioned, Paul was uh, was uh, uh, sitting for me, and uh, it's my uh, uh, preceptor. You know, was very interested not only EEG, but he was particularly interested at the time when when uh, LSD came to do something that was called uh, driving brain waves, uh, which means uh, having a uh, very powerful powers, uh, uh, stroboscope, yeah, and um, and uh, see if in the in uh, if you change the different uh, different uh, frequency frequencies, if um, you can change the uh, the brain waves yes. in in the. Um, um, occipital occipital area, mm -hmm. and so the condition was when when we wanted to have uh, LSD session mm -hmm. that we had to have uh, this not only the EEG before, during, and after, but also having this uh, brain brain uh, drive driven brain waves <laughs> driven, and so in the middle when when I was like between the three maybe the third and the fourth. Uh, session Our hour of the session yeah in the, in the middle in the middle, middle of, it, of the session uh, you know this assistant came and uh, said you know this was the time to to get the drive, drive the brain wave <laughs> and took me to the uh, to uh, a little small um, champ chamber and with um, put some uh, Kind of the um, the, stropos, the light. No, they had uh, electrodes on electrodes on, on my on my head. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then I was supposed to close my eyes, and then she brought this gigantic strobe mm -hmm. and turned it off. And you know, in the, in, the, in the max <laughs> in the max moment, you know, I just got a light that uh, I've never seen in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, I was at that time think that this is something that must have been similar to Hiroshima, you know, when, when the yeah. atomic bomb was exploded. Mm -hmm. And uh, later then I started thinking that this was probably uh, like what uh, uh, what you have uh, at the time when you die, according to Tibetan Book of the Dead, the, mm -hmm. uh, the light, mm -hmm. the primary light. And uh, just I, I lost completely, you know, where I was and uh, uh, the feeling of, of feeling to exist and but because I was nothing that I had the feeling that I became the whole Everything. whole universe at the same time and coming later coming down I was like in a in a actually universe in a, in a, in a physical universe in a, 
and there were a lot of things happening, you know, for which at the time I didn't even uh, have names. Uh, but it was, you know, something like later when I, I saw the uh, big bong, big, uh, bang, bang, big bang, bang, or, or um, uh, white holes or uh, cold black holes and white holes and so on. It was somewhere in that category. And uh, then when she when she turned off uh, turned off the uh, strobe, mm -hmm. then I started again sort of going back to uh, back to Earth, and uh, mm -hmm. I found the, the, the clinic. I found the, the planet first. I found the <laughs> the assistant. Your body. And, yeah. But at that point, I had a problem because uh, because. Uh, uh, my my um, consciousness was sort of moving around, mm -hmm. uh, and I couldn't somehow get to in get, can integrate those two. Um, and until you know, after a while, I finally managed that everything looked uh, together together together. <laughs> and I just have the feeling, you know, this was just an incredible thing. You know, this, mm -hmm. if I'm now. Uh, a psychiatry, this is by far the best thing that I can do. <laughs> Most interesting. <laughs> so, um, um, so that from that time, you know, I, I talk in non-ordinary states of consciousness. Today, I talk in holotropic states of consciousness. Uh, so, for that moment, you know, I, I've, the only thing I was doing in, professionally in in. Uh, my whole life, you know, it was studying in these non-ordinary states of consciousness one way or another. It's all related to it now. Yeah. I'm happy you came back. <laughs> you Me <did>. too. Resembled. <laughs> Remembered. Yeah. So <laughs> I wonder whether we go to the next part. Uh, your your passion, your vocation, the psychedelic research. Um, shall we go into that? So I've uh, um, found uh, a group of people who already had uh, access to to psychedelics. Of course, uh, LSD and psilocybin and psilocine, and then mescaline uh, from from uh, Germany. And, and some other things we had from Budapest, we had some of the, uh, uh, the small distancy, the, the uh, short, shorted uh, DMT. Sankaris. DMT? Yeah, different, different uh, um, D, DM, DMT, DMT different de derivates. And uh, this is where, where Brigitte was talking. Then we had we had a, a large group of uh, people uh, who were uh, uh, volunteers who were coming, and we were coming for different different of these uh, mm -hmm. uh, substances mm -hmm. um, on a on a uh, blind and it's uh, placebo and oh, and double blind uh, study with blood, 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 placebo and, uh, and substances. Uh, and just enormous amount of uh, investigation, you know, for example, yeah. uh, the, the, the blood, Take, taking blood, blood, blood uh, measuring, urine, urine. urine uh, EEG, uh, you know, you name. They were all wired. <laughs> and there was no interest in the in the experiences. There was interest in, in pharmacology, you know. Yes. It was just pharmacology. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but there were some in the periods, you know, before the some of the uh, interventions, mm -hmm. uh, I get a, a glimpse of the experiences mm -hmm. and uh, I couldn't believe uh, that was unbelievable inter-individual inter and intra-individually um, uh, vari variability, mm -hmm. you know, so that when, when we had people uh, with the same substance, uh, with the same set and setting and so on, uh, uh, it's completely different, you know, for, for somebody would have like a kind of more like a depressive, somebody would be like manic, uh, some of them had experiences from 
some images from uh, childhood or or um, uh, mythological images and so on. And I realized at that point that we are not really studying uh, uh, pharmacology. Yes. You know, in pharmacology, you have have some idea um, what you are for it. You know, what when when uh, uh, you want uh, to the person to sleep. Mm, you know. Yeah. Or in other people like uh, or headaches, or something. headache, or some people wanted to throw up, and so on. That you get some good, reasonable uh, res um, medicine response, yes. response mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. Whereas with these substances, we just had absolutely no idea what would happen. Never know. And then I realized we are not we are not studying pharmacology. We are actually exploring uh, the psyche. Yeah, we have some we have some unbelievable catalyst, you know, of the mm -hmm. psyche bringing us to some really deep uh, um, uh, level of the psyche. Yeah, and so I completely lost interest in in uh, pharmacology and took it back to the clinic. Uh, yeah. It's it's uh, <coughs> psychiatric, you know, psychiatric patients, and. Uh, there were two different periods there. At the beginning, I started using medium dosages, which we called uh, psycho, uh, psycholytic uh, uh, yeah. substances, which were sort of medium dosages, but we could give a whole series of these uh, sessions. Mm -hmm. And uh, we basically allow people, if they wanted to be uh, have their uh, eyes open and talking with them and so on, and so I get a lot of uh, very interesting illusions, uh, the optical illusions, you know, when uh, people are looking at me uh, during the middle of the LSD session. Sometimes I would look like a tiger, sometimes look like a Hitler, sometimes look like an angel. Mm -hmm. uh, or when I look around, you know, we were one time we were like in, in uh, uh, the Polynesian um, cottage somewhere or we were in bordello or we were in you know in uh, uh, death row and so on mm -hmm. and so i became fascinated you know how how people transform these mm -hmm. so i have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, experiences of when people were changing you know yeah and uh, then also with this uh, with this uh, um, slow um, Moving into the into the psyche, my one of my uh, patients started uh, calling it. Uh, uh, it's like the um, peeling uh, onion uh, of the psyche, mm -hmm. and another one said it's it's more like a um, um, when you some archaeology yeah. archaeology yeah, uh, yeah ke chemo chemo archaeology archaeology. Yeah. Um, then you go to different layers, mm -hmm. and so I realized that that uh, these different uh, uh, different experiences in uh, in the psyche, you know, uh, uh, read in certain kind of uh, layers. Some of them have happened earlier. Some of them uh, uh, little deep, more recent. Uh, so that the um, the tra traumatic experiences, for example, they don't uh, are like in a in a mosaic, but they are arranged in uh, in these uh, layers. And I started calling the coex uh, coex system. So they have the same and emotional quality, but they are they are different different experiences from different layers right? and also f found it that and these different levels suddenly that according to uh, that particular uh, trauma mm -hmm. started emerging and mm -hmm. we can we can sort of uh, talk about them you know work, and work with it work with them <clears throat> and then sort of go to the deeper mm -hmm. until actually we go finally get to to birth yeah. which was not which was not something uh, mm -hmm. uh, Except in in uh, in psychiatry, in yeah. psychology, you know that there is a there is a birth in in uh, oh, yes. the unconscious. Uh, then finding that the psyche has this own uh, 
intelligence, you know, that, that it takes you to these areas which have a strongest charge, mm -hmm. which almost means that those are the source of the, of the symptoms. And they will mm -hmm. typically would take you, you know, one level after another until they found the major source, mm -hmm. uh, which, was the, which was the birth, very, very mm -hmm. powerful. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we, when we continued, we found also the uh, transpersonal mm -hmm. uh, experiences and mm -hmm. taking all the way to, to archetypes. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so, so those were, the, you know, those were these, uh, these different uh, new kind of uh, things discovered in, in the psyche, but also found out that if I do it this way, that uh, it's not the best result, uh, you know, in terms of uh, uh, the result of the, uh, how good the result is, is of the, uh, of the session. something if you use, if you use smaller doses, yes. people, people keep their eyes open, mm. you don't get the best, yes, best yes, uh, yes. That's why, uh, why you So at that point, I, I started, started asking people to close their eyes, mm -hmm. increase the dosages, and, and use the, the music, uh -huh. yeah. which, which is then, uh, uh, you get much more positive uh, result, mm -hmm. uh, but you will not know why it happened. So you get a very, very powerful experience, the changes happen, but you had no idea why it happened. But I already had from that time the idea what what might have been happening in a very powerful way, mm -hmm. uh, what was happening in the smaller dosages, you know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that uh, actually it was possible to really create the whole uh, cartography of the psyche from the from the uh, uh, postnatal, you know, through through birth to transpersonal experiences and all the way to the uh, archetypes. Yes. Yes. Now, if you would start from the beginning, we start with the big dosages, you know, 300, mm -hmm. 500, then uh, you, there's no way you can figure out what, what really mm -hmm. was, uh, was yeah. happening. That's very true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very true. Yeah. So. So it's, it's a good, like you can use now with the larger uh, uh, dosages, you know, uh, but at the same time, you know that what, what might be behind the psyche mm -hmm. in, the, in the cartography. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, where, where should I uh, go on? Shall I ask you a personal question? Is that fine? You talked about archetypes, and I read in your book, The Impossible, what archetype you connect to. And I thought, I would love people to hear this. You talk about Shiva and why it was your archetype at that time. Well, for me, you know, the, Shiva was was uh, appearing all the time in my psychedelic sessions, and uh, I already was fascinated by it when I when I went to this uh, Hinduist uh, period period, you know, when, when my mother took me, took me to uh, this, uh, I don't know, I was fascinated by, by Shiva already just reading about it. Uh, but uh, when I, I was very fascinated by the, by the images, the, by the, also by the stories there, uh, but I had no, no, what, where it was coming from. Uh, I had the feeling that, you know, these people don't have much time uh, they have a lot of time and sit somewhere on the jandies and, and they sort of have come up with these beautiful <laughs> stories. Uh, on the gang Ganges, that's, that's Ganges. Be beautiful, exciting. But then when I started having uh, psychedelic experiences, I realized, you know, these studios are real. I mean, I, I, you meant to... Sh you meet you, them. You, you become the main Kali, you meet uh, Shiva, yeah. you know, these are, these are, these are real, you know. And so uh, I had to experience both the Bayarafa, Bi you know, this, this destroying uh, Shiva or the, the uh, dancing, uh, dancing Shiva, uh, different aspects of, of uh, Kali and so on. So a lot of it was uh, happening in, in Hinduism, but then also sometimes it, it was into, 
into uh, Buddhism. Uh, I had experiences from uh, from uh, uh, Australian, you know, the the uh, of the uh, Aborigines there. Uh, I had experiences for Greece, Greek, you know. And, uh, so what was what was really fascinating was this these archetypal images, these these mythological images. Uh, were available, you know, to all these different uh, countries. Uh, now this is a this is a very interesting kind of a situation, because this could not have been happening in the past, you know, because otherwise we would not have specific mythology like uh, to be, uh, um, Tibetic, uh, Tibetan uh, mythology or or Greece uh, uh, mythology mm -hmm. or thing, mm -hmm. because. These people had very powerful ways of, of having substances mm -hmm. and experiences, mm -hmm. but it seems that they must have come repeat, repeatedly to uh, the same kind of mythological images. Mm -hmm. Whereas now something happens that the, the whole um, uh, um, uh, collective unconscious mm -hmm. is some wide open. Mm -hmm. You know, people yeah. have experiences from from a different uh, mm -hmm. different countries and. Uh, and uh, uh, also uh, this similar happening on the surface, mm -hmm. you know, before, like, for example, in Tibet, you know, uh, was relatively uh, closed with a few people who were sort of coming up. Yes. And, uh, but today, you know, the, the Tibetans are all over the place. Mm -hmm. you have, uh, mm -hmm. And also people have uh, all the spiritual... Uh, so, uh, everything. Spiritual uh, mm -hmm. um, music, mm -hmm. you have uh, mm -hmm. spiritual. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so we are somehow uh, breaking sort of uh, uh, both the connection mm -hmm. out uh, on the on the surface, but also inside mm -hmm. of the unconscious. Mm -hmm. We have accept to it mm -hmm. now. So yeah, but I, I um, think it was really interesting uh, that people would have experiences like in Prague when when it was closed. You know, they they didn't have the internet, they didn't have the the information intellectually, and they, it would come it noticed. would come from yeah. from inside. You know, I think that's scientifically scientifically actually uh, very great. You know, so that you I I often say this. Uh, I think this the psychedelic experiences are like a, like an internet, but better because. <laughs> It's because you really experience things. I mean, you can experience anything, and like in the internet, it's all in, in intellectually. But in the psychedelics, it's all within you. you. You can do everything. You know, like the shamans are laughing that people would get in a rocket and fly to the moon. They would say, "Well, we go there all the time." You know, so why bother? Why bother? <laughs> I would love for Stan to say some closing words. Uh, uh, first, I thank you very, very much. Really, it, I, I uh, you know, I was somehow excited. It's not my core competence to do interviews, and not my core competence to not talk in between. So <laughs> and and, 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 and I, I told you, job. I told you that these days, you know, I really don't like to do interviews, and I'm I'm not very, yes. very well up to it. So well, we, it's is, a, from from us, it's a it's a, a giving of love for the people in the bicycle day. That's why we we did exactly. this. It's really not easy for Stan. So, but we love you guys, and we think thank you for all you're doing out there. And so we're, we're it's a way of sending our love. Exactly, and it is a way of sending giving my love to you to have done this. So may I ask Stan to say a few last words, and then I close the session. Well, I know that you wanted uh, me to talk, if we had more time, that you wanted to talk some about um, Albert Hoffman. Well, you can say something. Yeah, we still have yeah sure. Time. Yeah. But there were just so many questions. I would say, like, yeah. let's pick one subject yes. to close and not... Yes, please. No, you were asking if I, if I met uh, Albert and so on. Of course, I did, I, actually, mm -hmm. quite, a, quite a few times. Uh, the first time was very interesting. Uh, this was uh, just when I came to, to America. He came to Baltimore to our institute, institute mm -hmm. and uh, he actually wanted to go and see Washington. <laughs> so of course I was, uh, you know, the car. So I said, you know, um, of course I love to take you, take you to Washington. Mm -hmm. And so we went and and you know we saw the monuments and the the recycling. Uh, 
uh, mirrors and so on, and the um, Arlington uh, Cemetery. We mm -hmm. went to, to Kennedy and so on. Mm -hmm. And then he wanted to see White House. And that at the time, you know, you can just come all the way to, to the um, um, edges, you know, all the way to, to, the, to, the, hmm? to the stairs, the fence, all to the, the way to the fence, you know, two days, it's very, very different situation. Mm -hmm. So uh, I brought the car, you know, right by the, by the sidewalk mm -hmm. and um, Albert sort of her sitting <laughs> Like this, it opened the, opened the window and was looking at the white house, white, white, house. House, white house, looking at sort of, it was like a, almost like a child. You see, oh, so this is the fantastic, this is great uh, white house when these people, you know, make their decisions that can change the world. <laughs> I said, my God, this was, this was Nixon and this was Pyro. This, both of them, you know, were. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, ended up, ended up, you know, not the best, actually, not the best character. I said, Albert, do you know, you know, how you changed the world uh, as compared to Spiro Agnew or, or Nixon? Nixon? I mean, <laughs> so it was, it was really quite, quite amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, then, of course, I, I, Saw him quite a few. We brought him to to Esalen uh, once. He came to uh, ITA, which was in in uh, uh, Santa Rosa. You know, mm -hmm. this was another. We we carried him to when we were doing training in mm -hmm. uh, in uh, near Basel. Yeah, we have. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we have them a day, mm -hmm. and then again in in uh, in uh, Switzerland mm -hmm. to. Uh, uh, Carmen, you yeah. know, yeah. So, and then uh, a few times actually going to to his house, and the last one was uh, uh, when uh, it was about uh, four four weeks before he died. Mm -hmm. We had a, we had this afternoon there, mm -hmm. and it was very very wonderful. He was supposed to actually have a have a uh, talk. In the in uh, Basel for the forum, yeah, and we didn't feel very well, so he took us for for uh, an afternoon in his house, mm -hmm. and we talked. And uh, one of the interesting things that was we talking about uh, that he always had the idea that he would um, uh, with uh, LSD and, and psilocybin that it would be possible. Uh, do it in a proper way that we would create it something like a new uh, Elysium, Aloysius. you know, Aloysium, you know, like the Aloysium mysteries. Yes. And but of course, at the time when we were talking about it, you know, it was like it looked like a fantasy. I mean, mm. uh, this you know, this, this psychedelics was not mm. not available, mm. and so no, we still are not there. But it's uh, it's more conceivable that That's that it actually <laughs> one time it, it might happen. You know, in the in the future. Uh, yeah. So uh, Would you one of the things I, I told him, which uh, was in this in the in uh, um, for uh, uh, went to the to the. Um, uh, the forward, forward to his, the 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 about the child. The, yes, the the forward the, to the to the LSD that and, brought my problem child. Problem child, you know. So you want you could, and, you want to talk about the book? Yeah, sure. That's <laughs> all in there. Yeah. It's anyway, true. so uh, we we talked about this uh, this uh, book, you know, this uh, uh, my. Uh, Problem child, problem child, mm -hmm. and uh, I was saying, you know, this is uh, this uh, this is actually ended up in forward. Then mm. I said, you know, um, Albert, I think that this uh, uh, LSD was, was always a wonder child, mm -hmm. but it was it was brought up in a very dysfunctional family. <laughs> 
That's a good sentence. <laughs> That's a good sentence. It's a good sentence. Yeah. So. So uh, you mentioned at the beginning about this uh, this uh, book, uh, which um, uh, Brigitte was working on for for uh, about three seven weeks. Seven weeks, you know, secret, secretly. Uh, she didn't know that it was coming. It was coming. Uh, a uh, uh, gift, you know, for my for my uh, 90th anniversary, mm -hmm. and uh, then in the in the morning of the birthday, you know, I, I just came from from bed. I came down and and we were preparing some uh, breasty uh, birthday, and uh, she had this little book there in front of it, in all co covered very beautifully and i opened it i just couldn't couldn't believe that you know such a such a wonderful wonderful book so one one important part of it is that i have never done really uh, to uh, put together what when i was when i was going through uh, uh, exploration of, of lsd mm -hmm. i came from the beginning from the from the pharmacology all the way through the you know through the um, birthday through the through the uh, perinatal, uh, perinatal matrices mm -hmm. through the transpersonal experiences mm -hmm. and then all the way to uh, the archetypes mm -hmm. and astrology you know mm -hmm. and so this is there or you know completely the, in, the there. interview our interview and then uh, there's also the the foreword of uh, of uh, uh, your, Albert, your Albert. forward, what you wrote. My, my for forward Albert. for Al Albert, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I didn't know when, when we, we started looking at it, uh, I didn't realize that it was never published in, in uh, German languages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was, he, he wrote the, the book, you know, in, uh, in English, of, in, in um, German. Uh, German. Mm -hmm. Uh, but when it was published in, in uh, America, it was not uh, translated in, in German. It was, mm -hmm. it was just in English. The foreword. So forward. the foreword is just in English. Mm -hmm. So it's the only, only French, the German book that it has. Yeah. yeah. Thank and you. And uh, a lot of interesting, you know, wonderful people from, from uh, uh, Switzerland and from from German and Austria, including you. Yeah. Well, that's a and, right. and your friends and lots of wonderful photos, right? Lots of wonderful photographs. Yeah, wonderful photos. I found, I had to dig some out, and I I it was really it, they were funny photos. So I think that you got this wonderful gift. Uh, uh, in the book, and you gave us a wonderful gift by talking to us and doing this uh, little or quite long video. I want to close. Thank you so much. Uh, what, what Thank you again. Going? And uh, yeah, God bless all you. The, all the best. Bye bye. <laughs> and all the very best to you. Thank you, dear Stan. Thank you, dear. Thank, you, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome.